Ah, shit, guess who's back? A whole month has gone by, and you know what that means. It's time for me to upload another video. In all seriousness, though, I plan to start uploading a lot more frequently, but that's not the point of today's video. The point of today's video is to go over some recent Nintendo news and rumors, some potential leaks, and maybe if we have some time at the end, because I didn't get a chance to get into it last time, the veteran characters that I think are confirmed for Smash 5 based on the trailer, some newcomers that I think are basically shoe-ins, and of course, the dream characters that I would like to see. But before we do any of that, I owe a lot of you a huge apology. You know that little notification bell you're supposed to click if you want to get notified every time I upload or do a live stream or anything like that? Well, apparently over the last year or so, I've been clicking the start streaming button on OBS accidentally and people have been getting those notifications. I didn't really realize until my boss who's subscribed to all my stuff and my girlfriend who's subscribed to all my stuff is just like, did you? Were you streaming yesterday? I got this notification and then I checked and you weren't streaming. And that's when I realized, Oh crap, I've been accidentally clicking that start streaming button like so many times over the past year or two and I think just be I thought because I'm clicking it for like a 0.5 second and I click stop streaming that no one's gonna get that notification. I was wrong! So for anyone who has clicked that notification bell because you're like, yes, I wanna know whenever he posts something and then I completely, completely tease you all the time by, you know, going live when I'm not actually going live, I am sorry. It basically just boils down to me being a huge idiot because I could just, you know, unlink my YouTube stream key from OBS and then it would have nothing to go live to and that would solve the problem altogether, but I'm a moron. And to even further prove that I'm a moron, in the last video it kind of sounded like I was like talking through a tunnel or talking through a tube and I was wondering why this awesome Blue Yeti mic was giving me that, that sound to it. It sounded like I was talking, my voice was bouncing off my monitor and then coming back into the mic. And guess what? That's exactly what was happening. See, for some reason, I figured that the mic should be this way with, you know, the, the blue logo facing the audience or the camera or whatever it is you're trying to do. But it's actually supposed to be facing this way when you're on the cardioid setting because the, the mic pickup is only coming like this. So... Once again, I'm an idiot, I'm sorry. And last thing I wanted to mention before we get into all the Smash Bros news and rumors and leaks and goodness and all that jazz, check out my hoodie. You might be thinking, is that one of those cool galactic space style hoodies I always see in those Facebook ads? And you're right. The company who makes these sweaters into the AM hit me up through email and they were like, hey, would you like a free sweater and a discount code to give to your followers so that if they want to buy some cool sweaters, they can save some money? And I was like, heck yeah, send me a free sweater and a discount code. So what I'm trying to say is this is not a sponsored video whatsoever. They're not paying me. They're not sending me any money. But they did give me a sweet ass cool sweater that I'm going to show you right now. And if you want to get some cool sweaters for yourself, you got a discount code. Alright, so when it came in the mail, I did open it and give it a little bit of sneak peek because I wanted to see if it was like different from the colors on the one I already had and if it was like different altogether. And it totally is, so I'm super stoked, but I haven't actually like taken it like fully out of the packaging. It's like super faded too. I flipped it over thinking like the writing was on the other side. There's nothing on the other side. It's just super faded. But yeah, there we go. We got the, I think that's a, a sticker in there. Like an in, in, into the AM sticker right there. I'm trying to like talk over the thing. Nice cool galactic space design. And uh, this crinkling is probably super loud. So let's just open this bad boy up. Oh my goodness. It, it, feel, it feels amazing. I was looking at the mic like that's the webcam. It feels so good. The texture... Yeah, it's like the same as this one, but I mean, I've washed this one a few times, but oh my god, the, the texture of this is amazing. Love their little logo on the back there. We got, oh, yep. Yeah. We got the Crossroads logo design, whatever you want to call it, on the front, on the chest, over the heart. I like it. I like it a lot. And you got the logo on the on the bottom here as well, which makes me wonder... Because the one that I have, it's like a unicorn, see? So now I'm wondering, is this a real Into the AM sweater? Have I been lied to my whole life? Into the AM marijuana leaf sweater. Oh, it's right there. It's that one right there. Um. Oh! I've already visited this link. That's like the same pattern. It's definitely the same pattern. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, and it has the unicorn. What? Was this an old logo? Why does this one have the unicorn too? All right, whatever, whatever. So the story of how I got this sweater is actually pretty great. The company didn't hit me up or anything, ask me if I wanted a free sweater. It was like back in like the old high school days, maybe 10, eight years ago or so. I had a house party. It was probably pretty chilly at the end of the night and my buddy and his girlfriend had to like skateboard or longboard home or something. And it was gonna be, it was gonna be quite a cold journey. So my buddy Connor asked me, hey, do you have a sweater that my girlfriend could borrow for the trip home and I'll get it back to you somehow? So I was like, sure whatever I gave her the biggest warmest sweater I had and I sent them on their way but I'm sure you've seen all the memes and the jokes and it's just like you give like a girl or a girlfriend takes your sweater and it's just like you know you're never gonna get that sweater back and lo and behold I never saw it again so years went by years went by and finally not like I was expecting it or anything Connor hits me up on Facebook and he's like hey dude remember back when you had that party and you gave your sweater to my girlfriend and you never got it back and I was like yeah yeah I remember and he's like yeah I kind of felt really bad about that so uh Pick a cool sweater off this website and I'll buy it for you and mail it to you. Lo and behold, I got a sweet sweater. And then I checked my email the other day and into the AMs like, hey, do you want another sweet sweater and a coupon code? So of course I was like, heck yeah, dude, send me the free stuff. Give me the coupons. And now I give the coupons to you. So I don't know how long I've been talking about this bullcrap that none of you care about, but I mean, I've been recording for 12 minutes so far. So let's get into the Smash Bros news and rumors and leaks and all that good stuff. So as you all know, the teaser trailer for Smash 5 dropped over two months ago. And ever since I've just been compiling links and stories to talk about and make a video about. So let's go through the list and see what we have to work with here. All right, we got a rumor, another rumor, rumor, ru oh, here's an actual news article with some substance. Masahiro Sakurai's Super Smash Bros. Switch work schedule appears to be much healthier this time around. All right, so it's not exactly news. It's a bit of a fluff piece, but let's see what it has to say here. During the development of Super Smash Bros. 4, Sakurai mentioned that he was suffering from calcific tendinitis in his right arm due to this work schedule, and he would often work on the project during his days off. What? You're even working on your days off, my dude. He would essentially have to force himself to use his left hand more during playtesting as a result of this. So this dude was literally killing his right arm. Sakurai mentioned that it felt stressful, almost to the brink of death. This man was working himself so much that he was getting stressed out to the point where he thought he was going to die. That's insane. Fortunately, this time around, Sakurai's only working 10 hours per day, and he's also giving himself two days off a week. So now his work schedule is a lot closer to that of like a working class citizen. Where I live in Canada, it's pretty standard to work like 40 hours a week, five days a week. So that's like eight hour shifts. Sometimes you do like 40 to 45 hours. And then usually anything after that is considered overtime and you get paid extra for all those overtime hours. So I think it's really great that Sakurai actually has like a normal work schedule now. It's not just like forcing him to pump these games out to the point where it's like killing him. And I mean, if you go back to the old interviews, Sakurai didn't even want to do any more Smash games after Melee. After Melee, he's like, I'm done. That's the end. I feel like after every Smash game, Sakurai says something like, yeah, you know, I kind of I kind of just want to work on some other projects besides Smash for a bit. And then he does a couple of other games like Kid Icarus or whatever. And then Nintendo comes back and is like, hey, Sakurai, my man, my dude, my boy. You think you could cook us up another one of those sweet, sweet Smash Bros games you always do? And then Sakurai's just like, eh, I don't know. I'm kind of working on these other games or these characters that I really, really like. And then Nintendo's just like, oh, come on, man. Just one last time, one last Smash Bros game. Pretty, pretty, please. But then Sakurai's just like, man, every single time you guys are like, just one last time. But then Nintendo just keeps on nagging and nagging and nagging. And then eventually Sakurai gets annoyed and he's like, fine, fine. I'm going to make another game, but it's going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to have a butt ton of characters and you guys are never going to ask for another Smash Bros game ever again. But the vicious cycle continues because here we are on the verge of Smash 5. God bless you, Sakurai. And speaking of Smash Switch being a completely brand new game, here's a silly meme I forgot to share last video. This says 2018 and not 2014, 2018, correct? Yup. And it says original game with no mention of Bandai Namco, correct? Yup. Masahiro Sakurai also wrote a tweet implying that it's been a new game and has been under development for some time and in silent pretty much confirming it's a new game. That makes sense to me. Then it's a new game. It's a port. In other Smash related news, Legacy XP 2.0 just got released and goddamn does it look amazing. Now I'm gonna be honest, I haven't really checked out too many Smash Bros mods and like the only ones I've seen just come out of, you know, Nintendo's hilarious videos. But this one looks really good and I'm definitely gonna have to try it for myself. It doesn't look like a joke mod at all. All the characters look super serious. All the newcomers look amazing and I absolutely wanna try them and figure out some combos with them. The only thing I'm wondering is like, 
Who am I going to play with? Does it have an online mode? Am I actually going to have to make friends and invite them over? We'll see about that. But if you would like to see me playing some Legacy 2.0 XP, XD, whatever it's called on this channel, let me know in the comments. But now it's time for the juicy, juicy rumors and the leaks. The first one I wanted to talk about was this super, super believable Nintendo E3 and Treehouse schedule. So apparently something like this comes out every year just around this time and it's always fake. It's basically like the online equivalent of an elementary school kid going, yo, my dad works at Nintendo and he told me this game is going to come out. There's no like credibility or sources to it. And if you look at the second page, some stuff really starts to stand out. You ever watch a cop show or a detective show and the suspect is just talking a little bit too much and giving away a bit too much information? Or like a, a kid's trying to tell a lie about something and their story just has way too many details. That's what I kind of feel like the second page is like. Like the very first thing for the Super Smash Bros. Switch reveal. It says characters reveal random matches showing some characters and mechanics. Random matches is the most vague thing ever. I get that whoever created this is basically trying to imply, you know, free-for-alls showing off different characters, different stages, different mechanics and items and whatnot, but they would just say that in an official document for an official live presentation. You want everything to be like crystal clear and to go perfectly. You're not going to put some ambiguous thing like random matches on there. No, the people who are running this show for you, they need instruction. You're not just going to put random matches what are we playing where are we playing with which characters like come on give me some instruction here and then where is it if you look at the Star Fox one where was it here the third one gameplay of the new flight system npc interaction and side mission in corneria they got npc in all lowercase letters that's an acronym or an abbreviation or whatever you want to call it that should be in all capital letters. This is a professional document for a live presentation. Everything needs to be professional. Everything needs to look official, look professional, look clean, look slick. Everyone should be able to understand it and know what's going on. You're not just going to take an acronym and not, you know, capitalize it in a professional document. People are going to try and read that as an actual word at first and then realize it's supposed to be three letters that mean something. And the last thing I want to mention that I thought, you know, really stood out to me was for Splatoon 2. It says level showcase and it says online matches as Octoling. Why would they play online? You're in this huge, huge live event. So many things could go wrong if you're trying to, you know, play an online match. Why not just do, you know, local LAN play? Doesn't Splatoon 2 offer that now if everyone has their own Switch? Can't you connect over a local area network and play, you know, Turf War and Splat Zones and all that all that awesome regular multiplayer mode stuff? Why would you need to go online to show that off? You don't need to go online to show that off. You can show off what the Octoling is capable offline. There's no need for that. So like I said, this this document looks like it's just a kid talking a little bit too much, kind of gave himself away. And then it gets to the point where some of these things start sounding really, really fake. So pro tip, if you're trying to lie, you're trying to make a little leak or a spoiler or whatever it is, keep it simple. There are also two other rumors I wanted to talk about that are kind of related to this like fake E3 thing. And the first is the Pokemon Switch, Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee rumors. Holy crap, I'm so hot. Jeez, it's summer. Why am I wearing this? So this Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee thing was mentioned in that super fake E3 presentation thing. But about like 10 days ago, probably like two weeks by the time I put this video out, Somebody posted, I think it was this image on 4chan with like the, the title art. Yeah, so here it is. Nothing too special, not high res at all, pretty low quality. So a lot of people were like, get him out of here. This is garbage. Get him out of here. But when people started sharing this image around, it started recirculating a thread from the end of March, I believe. Yeah, Saturday, 31 March. And this guy was just like, real leaks, let's go, yellow remix for Switch, two versions, Pikachu and Eevee, red and blue play a role in the story, you and your rival are new trainers. Following Pokemon Return, HM still replaced with Poke Ride from Alola, online has a hub for players, then it mentions a bunch of Pokemon Go stuff, announcement soon, releasing this year. So at first I was thinking this might be the only like legitimate leak out of all of them, the only like rumor that might have some substance to it but then i realized the pokemon go stuff seems weird for like like a pokemon switch game and then i realized that everything besides the pokemon go stuff is like just your typical stuff that you would expect to see in the next pokemon game okay maybe something like 
the poker ride from Alola coming back is not something you would 100% expect, but like it's not something that would shock you if they brought it back. You can kind of expect it to return. If it doesn't return, it's like, meh, whatever. If it does return, it's like, meh, whatever. Then they say following Pokemon Return, which I mean, if you ever played Pokemon Yellow, that is a must have. Like one of the big sellers of the game was being able to develop your relationship with Pikachu and he would walk behind you, you could turn around, press the A button, see what his emotion was. A lot of the times he wasn't having any of your shit and then once you got to the end of the game, he loved you. Like this was your Pikachu at the start of Pokemon Yellow. You could look back, tap the A button and you would see him giving you this face. So I mean, obviously they're gonna make following Pokemon return. This whole red and blue thing, kinda cool, whatever, two versions, Pikachu and Eevee. Don't we always get two versions? So I mean, besides the first half of this just being, you know, stuff that we would expect, and the second half of this being, you know, kinda outlandish, ridiculous stuff that I don't see coming true very likely, Pokemon Yellow is one of my favorite Pokemon games and I would love a remake, so let's get it. And the other rumor I wanted to mention is that Retro Studios is rumored to be working on a new Star Fox game. But not the traditional dogfighting, R-Wing piloting Star Fox game that we know and love. Instead, it's rumored that it's going to be a racing game similar to the F-Zero series where Captain Falcon comes from. And then, if we go back to that super legit E3 showroom instruction leak, we have F-Zero SX and Star Fox Lilat System. Gameplay of the new flight system, NPC interaction, and side mission in Corneria. So it sounds like your typical kind of old school Star Fox, riding around the R wing, shooting everything type of game. Now I know these are all just rumors and they're probably all fake, every single one of them, but please, if you're gonna make a Star Fox game, don't make it like an F-Zero racing game. Just make an old school, retro Star Fox game that we know and love, and then also make an F-Zero game. I would love an F-Zero game on the Switch. Imagine if this E3 leak actually came through and they did make a Star Fox game and an F-Zero game. Oh, Here's a fun fact for you, Star Fox and F-Zero are actually related. Not really, but kinda. Holy crap, I don't remember this page being so colorful. So here we have James McCloud. James McCloud is a character in some of the early F-Zero games, and his ship that he drives, whatever you call this thing, the machine, I guess, it looks pretty similar to an R-Wing, wouldn't you think? I think so too. And this outfit he's wearing kind of reminds me of the outfit that this guy wears, you know? He's got the green pants, the gray jacket, the silver boots, he's got the gun on the side, he's got the shades, he's got everything, okay? He's designed to look like Star Fox, his name is James McCloud, which is actually Star Fox's father's name. So if the name, his racer, and his whole getup isn't enough for you, he's also the leader of this team called the Galaxy Dogs, which is just a really obvious parody of the Star Fox team. However, according to Nintendo Power, this was all just a big joke. The developers confirmed that they have no relation whatsoever, and they just did all of this for fun. Pretty crazy though. Oh, I said he was in the early F-Zero games, but he's actually from F-Zero X and F-Zero GX, so not, not too, too early. So when I saw the rumor that Retro Studios was going to make a Star Fox racing game, that had like an f-zero take on it all i could think of was this guy james mcleod and i was like maybe maybe the person who thought up this rumor came across james mcleod or something and you know let's let's start a rumor about it who knows holy crap i just realized i've been recording for like an hour now and i haven't even gotten to the smash bros stuff yet so enough of these rumors and leaks and garbage it's time to talk smash 5 speculation because i mean what else am i gonna do post gameplay on this channel come on so when the teaser trailer first dropped, there was this part where you see like all the characters lined up in the background. They're all like little shadows or silhouettes. People have been combing through that part trying to decipher which character is which. There's a few people out there suggesting that some of these silhouettes could be some crazy, crazy newcomer characters. But like I said in my previous video, I think those silhouette characters are probably just a couple of veterans. Okay, this picture is terrible, terrible quality, but we're gonna have to use it anyways. Okay, so we got the Photoshop open. We're gonna zoom in a little bit here so we can see better. And this is extremely low res. There was another clip I saw where it was a little bit higher res. And you could see, I think it was like something over in this area. So I was going to say that's like possibly Palutena with her staff, but now you can't really see any sort of staff. So it's kind of just like a random body. But anyways, let's go through 1 to 19, I guess, and we'll figure it out. So this guy here, this is obviously Yoshi. Uh, here we got like Pit. Here's his head, his little neck here, his shoulders. Got his like bow sticking up there. Um, this obviously like ice cream cone head thing is DK down here. No clue. Actually, you know what? This thing kind of looks like it could be a crown. Like this is like 
the circular part this is like the middle part that sticks up like the um, i don't know the gems the crystals whatever you want to call it i think that's diddy kong's hat like for me it looks like it actually looks so obvious that could be a crown um this could also be a hat like this bill part here that could be a hat so that could be like ness I think it could also be like Kirby or something. Then there's like this figure here, which isn't even like numbered on this picture, but this could be a, maybe just a shadow. Who knows? This skinny boy here is clearly Marth or one of them Fire Emblem pretty boys. Like 15 over here is probably like Lucina or Marth. Same with this one. And I think in the middle, eight and nine here is Mario and Link because they were kind of like center stage in the trailer. People are saying like, oh, it's Link with his bow or that this part is his bow. I don't know. I think, like, this part is, like, part of his shield. Uh, I don't really see what we're looking at down here. Oh, I guess this could be the body of somebody. This is, this kind of looks like a Pikachu head right here. Like, the ears. That looks like a Pikachu head. To me, this is another round ball character or someone with a hat. So, we got, like, Kirby, Jigglypuff, Ness, Lucas, who knows. Um, this one, obviously, Samus. This one's got, like, a, like, a tilted, chic type of ninja pose to her. Uh, this one's obviously Bowser, of course. This thing looks like it could be like a Pikachu shape. Ooh, what did I just do? Oh, I erased. Oh, no. This looks like it could be a Pikachu shape, but I don't know. I'm gonna have to give it to, like, Fox or something. Uh, and like I said at the start, like, this looks like a female character to me with, like, some kind of staff or something. Something like Palutena, maybe Zelda. I know Zelda doesn't really have a staff. Other people are saying it looks like a male figure, maybe like Captain Falcon or Ganondorf. And then finally on the end, we have this little blob here, um, kind of similar size to like um, like the Ness blob or the Pikachu blob, I would say, or even like the Mario blob, but it's kind of fat. So I might give this one to Wario. This could be like, this could be like a Wario head right here. Like, you know how big and round that fat so is? This looks like this could be Bayonetta. It's either one of the girly Fire Emblem boys or Bayonetta. Or it could be Girl Marth. It could be just Girl Marth. So that's my take on it. All veterans, no newcomers. And to be honest, I think it would be pretty damn cool if all the newcomers could return. Even characters like Pichu. Oh, I can already see the comments now. Why would you waste a spot on Pichu when you can have awesome characters like Goku and Shrek? All right, fine. If it's not a matter of taking up, you know, spots or crucial development time, then I would love to have every single veteran come back. If it's not a matter of, you know, taking the development time needed to develop a newcomer or filling a spot that a cool newcomer would fill, then fine. Bring them all back. I love it. Let's do it. But if we can't have everyone, just give me Wolf and Ivysaur. Please, Sakurai, just Wolf and Ivysaur. Please, screw the Ice Climbers, just Wolf and Ivysaur. No Snake, just Wolf and Ivysaur. But when it comes to the newcomers that I think have a really high chance of getting into the next Smash game, there are two really important things to think about. What big titles have come out in the past few years? And what big titles are going to come out in the near future for the Nintendo Switch and the 3DS? Look at games like Splatoon, for example, a brand new Nintendo property that just came out of nowhere and everyone loved it. Obviously, they're going to put those characters into Smash Bros, so they did. So we can say that the Inklings are confirmed newcomers, whether they're going to be two separate, complete different characters, or just color swaps, who knows. But they are confirmed, they've been a huge part of Nintendo for the past few years, and now they got their spot in Smash. Then coming up for the Switch very soon, we have that new Yoshi game, Kirby Star Allies just came out recently, the Mario and Rabbids game was pretty popular, the Pokémon Tournament DX game has tons of new characters, and there was actually a new Dylan game that came out on the 3DS just a couple of months ago. So I think there's a pretty high possibility that we might see a couple of new characters from some of these brand new games get put into the next Smash installment. One of my dream characters that I've wanted in Smash for a long time, and I feel like he really deserves a spot so many people have been wanting him in for a long time, would be Gino from the Mario RPG games. I was checking out some of that Legacy 2.0 gameplay, and Gino has some crazy projectiles in that game, and it just makes me wonder, what could the Super Smash Bros. team do with a character like this? He's got so much potential. And like I've mentioned in previous videos, I would love to see Bomberman. He's been in a ton of Nintendo games in the past and my man Earthworm Jim. And last but definitely not least, I think it's time for Smash Bros to show some love to Waluigi. I mean, we're five games in. We gotta put the Wah in there. Just give me the Wah. We need the Wah. Now we've got a lot of Waluigi haters out there and he's, people say, you know, he's not a real character. He was just kind of put in there in Mario Tennis so that Wario could have a doubles partner. But you know what? Because of that game, Waluigi is to Wario what Luigi is to Mario. We gotta have the Wah. We need that Wah. Give me the whack. You know what? I could honestly talk about potential characters and like the moves they could have for hours. I could just go on and on about this stuff. 
So I think I'm just going to leave it at that and save that topic for a whole video on its own. Maybe I can take clips from previous games and put together my own little, you know, dream move sets for these characters. Let me know what you would like to see. And let me know what characters you'd like to see in Smash 5. What veterans do you think are coming back? Which newcomers do you think are pretty much guaranteed based on their recent popularity? And what do you think of all the leaks and the rumors and the news that have come out in the past month? Make sure to let me know in the comments. I would love to read what you guys have to say about all the stuff I talked about and of course if you want to see me playing some legacy 2.0 xp on this channel let me know as well as always thanks for watching all the way until the end of the video i'm emg smash central and i'll catch you next time